Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting session on Power Apps Design. This video is part of our learning series where you get up to speed on Power Apps and explore various tips and tricks. Today's video is one of those tricks. It's all about resetting screens the easy way. It's a pro tip on how you can centralize formulas related to getting things back to where you want when you need them. And it's a trick that can save you endless time on redundant typing and hours even of troubleshooting down the road. So let's get to it. But first, help keep this videos flowing by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Then come on back and check out our learning series videos that explore learning power apps, our solution series videos that explore complete business solutions, and our mastery series that explore mastering power apps design. Let's roll. So we're going to just create a new app here and I've called this one full reset because we're going to be talking about how to reset your screens all in one shot. All right. So here we are at our main screen. First, we're going to add a toggle control. So let's go ahead and put that in here and I'm going to give this a name. We'll just call it toggle reset screen one. Um, I like to kind of give them a little designation as to what they are and how they're going to work and more importantly what they're going to work on. In this case it's going to work on screen one. So let's just say that we have a text box here and we'll put another text box in here and maybe we'll have a, uh, a date picker in here and we'll have a drop down in here and uh, I think we'll probably just leave it at that. I think you get the general idea of this. Uh, we'll put a checkbox. Why not? We'll just put a checkbox down here. So what I want to do is, uh, and, and we'll talk about this in context of an edit form as well, but for right now we're just going to talk about these controls being on your screen. So in this case we've just set up a couple of custom controls and we're going to have these to be something that people uh, will type into and maybe there's a submit, whatever. It doesn't matter. We're not, we're not really concerned with that. What we're concerned with is that when people come to the screen that we want this to be reset to some default values. So let's just go in and put these in and we'll say uh, this should be default for text one and this will be uh, default for text two. So we'll go ahead in here and we'll change this and we'll say this is going to be, uh, let's go, I don't know, let's say from now or today. It really doesn't matter in this case because we only have a date. Uh, let's go back one uh, month. So we say data add from now minus one month. And we can see since today is October the 8th, 2020, we are actually going back one month from there. So we have 9, 8, 2020 as our default in here. We'll leave this drop down sample. Drop down sample just has a couple numbers in it, but we'll say the default value for this, instead of being one, we'll make it two. So our default drop down items have, or our sample drop down items have, uh, I think, one, two, three, maybe four. I don't remember how many different items in, but we'll just say this is going to be two. So uh, then our checkbox, we'll just say that the default for that instead of false is going to be true. Okay, so um, let's just pretend that this is what we want our screen to look like as soon as someone comes to the screen to enter in information. Of course, what happens, and, and to simulate this, we'll go ahead and throw another screen in here. And in fact, I'm going to move this up in the food chain and we'll make this the first screen. And we'll go ahead and put a button in here that just navigates to screen one. Probably should have named those a lot differently, but just remember one is really two and two is really one. It doesn't, it's, it's not important for this demo. The important part is that we're actually just navigating to that screen. So if we go ahead and navigate to it, we see that we're here on our input screen and we're ready to put stuff in there. Let's go ahead and put, I'm just, just to simulate this again, I'm going to say that we have a save button here. And so in our save button, we would, uh, you know, do whatever to save and that's fine. And um, then the next thing we do after we're finished with that is we would navigate back to screen one. Or in this case, I'm just going to say back so that'll take us back. 
All right, so let's go back to our first screen here and navigate to this. And let's just actually kind of put this in play. So here's our default for text one, and that's what we want there. Uh, but let's say the user comes in and they enter some information in here, and they have more here, and they change the date and say, oh, you know, it's, uh, it's really back here, June 8th, so we'll say that. And they say, oh, yeah, see there, it had three. Uh, they say, oh, it's, it's a one, and they turn this off. And then they click Save. And it's going to save that information. Of course, if we actually were saving it, it would save it. But more importantly, in this case, it's going to go back. So we're back at our original screen. Now, at this part, they decide, OK, we want to enter another record. So they click on that, and they're like, oh, well, that's the information I had there before. I don't want that. I want that to be the default information. So how do I go about doing this? Uh, you might have seen some situations before where the answer is, okay, well, let's go into the on visible and we'll do some sort of create some sort of variable here and we'll make it true and then we'll make it false and then we'll we'll set the reset of all these to that variable. And I'm going to take it up just a step. And this is sort of important because sometimes when you come to a screen not only do you want to reset things back to their default but you might also want to do some other actions as part of resetting that and we'll see more of that in context of a form but in this case we're just going to come in here and we're going to say update context and we'll say local screen one reset and we'll set that to true and so we have that local variable that we're creating now here comes the toggle so let's go over to our toggle and what we're going to do on this is we're going to set our default to be that variable local screen one reset so when that goes true obviously when the screen is is visited that toggle is going to go true and when it goes true what i want to do this is very important what i want to do is i want to update context of that variable the local one screen set and I want to set it to false so what's going to happen here is as soon as we come to this screen the on visible is going to fire and it's going to turn that variable to true that toggle is going to go to true or checked and as soon as it goes to checked it's going to set this variable to false which means the toggle is going to go right back to false so it's going to go back it's going to go on and then it's going to go off uh, let's take a look at that so we can see this real quick here. So if we uh, if we go and click on our button, sometimes it's a little too fast to see, uh, and we're not seeing it at all. So it's just happening that fast, but it's actually going on and then off. In the next step, we want to actually set these. We're going to go through, I'm just going to select them all, because that way I can get right to the reset. And what I'm going to do is rather than set, I could set it to that variable, but I kind of like to leave some breadcrumbs in my design work. And what I mean by breadcrumbs is if I just put the variable in here of the local screen one reset, in the future, if somebody's looking at this app and trying to figure out what that is, they would have a hard time in some cases trying to hunt down that variable and where it was defined. So instead, I'm just going to say this is going to be the toggle reset screen one dot value. So I'm just going to reference that. This way, when a person comes back in and looks and says, what's going on with the reset of this? They'll say, oh, this is based on toggle reset screen one value. So they know to go look for that particular control. They find that control and they see, oh, OK, this is the formula that's actually creating this to be happening. So they know a little bit more about where the logic is, the formulas are that they would want to reset or change or alter or whatever. Troubleshoot, let's just say. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and take this to the test here. So we've got all of these. Remember, these are not default. This is what was changed from the last time somebody entered information in. So we'll simulate saving it. And then we'll click on our button to go back into the screen. And that toggle fired. You didn't even see it happen. But now all of our controls have gone back to their reset state or the default state so they have default values in there so if we were to take this out we'll just we'll really we'll really shake it up here and go uh to new year's eve and number three and turned off so we've got a pretty empty form here except for a date and a three so remember that click save click button back here they all are again back to the default 
So the next part of this, which is kind of significant, is we've got our toggle, that's great, but now we actually may want to do some other things in there. Uh, because essentially we've imitated the same concept of just in our own visible doing a uh, update context local screen one reset true and then false which is all we need for the reset 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 really wants to see a true value and then kind of go false again because if you leave it at true then you can sort of never really set it to true again because it's already true so the idea is to set it true then set it back to false and that's what we're doing with this toggle and again, we haven't really done much that's different, but when we start to expand this a little bit, so let's take these guys and I'm just gonna throw them over here onto the side. And uh, I'm gonna connect to some data here. And we'll go ahead and connect to something in SharePoint. And now what we're gonna do is on our screen, we're gonna go ahead and put an edit form in here. And we'll go ahead and connect this to our PO list. And nothing much here, just a couple fields. In fact, I'm going to remove the attachments just because I just don't like seeing them in there. They take up way too much space. All right, so here we have our form. And our form, let's just say, was in view mode all the time. So we'll do that. And in fact, just so we have some data in this, I'm going to just look up the first record of our PO list just so we have something there. And give this a moment, we should have, there, there we go. All right, so we have some data, we have some stuff going on. That's all fine. But the reason I put this in here is because now comes the beauty of how this toggle can play into this. You can't reset a form, you can change its mode. So if it's in view mode, I may want to, that whenever we come to the screen, I want this stuff to all be reset, and I want our edit form to actually go into edit mode. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and before I change the context of the, the variable back to false, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say um, I'm going to say new form form one. So now we're actually saying that we want this form to go into new form mode. So that gives us the opportunity that in here we can start putting in all kinds of other things that we need to do whenever this screen is reset. So let's go back, save that, click on our button, we come and there it is in a new form mode with a new record. So it's all ready to go. We don't have any save stuff on here. We're not really worried about that at this point in time. We're just putting in some of the plumbing to, to show how to do this reset. Uh, so what are the kind of things that you'd want to do in there? Maybe you have some sort of collection that you need to go and grab or refresh. Or, or if there's a good one. So let's just say that you have a dropdown on your form. And that drop down is going to be coming from a data source. We'll just make it from our PO list as well. And we're going to display maybe just the title column in there. Okay, so we'll, we'll narrow it down to that. So now we've got our PO list here. And one of my favorite things about drop downs is when you do that, they don't really quite take sometimes. So you have to cut them out and paste them back in. And then boom, now you actually have everything that you want. Okay, but that's, again, not important. What's important here is maybe this is something that's important to us, that this be refreshed every time that we come to this screen because we want people to see maybe this is a multi-user app that we're putting together and other people are changing records. So we just want it to be that whenever somebody comes to the screen, this is updated and refreshed. So what do we do? We say, come in here and we say, all right, we want to refresh PO list. And that's all we need to do to refresh that dropdown because it's based on PO list. So if we were to make a change in there, again, at this point in time, it's refreshed, it's updated, it has everything in. We go, we put our stuff in, we're sitting at this screen for a little while, and then maybe five other people have updated records that are in that PO list. And now we click the button, it's gonna come back, and it has reset these. It has put our form into edit mode and it has refreshed this drop down list. And all that happened just from within the toggle itself. So I realized it didn't really simulate as well on this, this edit form, 
but uh, I'll come over here and in this one where we did our do whatever to save. Uh, at the same time, we also did view form of the form one, or really that's not going to show all that well. So let's do it on its own separate icon just so that you can see. So we'll just put in over here, we'll put a, uh, a cancel button. That's good. And we'll say that and on select that, we're going to say view form form one. Okay. So there we go. Take a look at this. We do this. Now our, our form is in view mode. We make some changes over here. We'll just put in a bunch of letters and we'll set the date on this to something else. And we'll set this to one. We'll turn that off and everything is all set. We'll go ahead and save. We save it. Later on, we come, we click back. Everything is back to default. Our form has been put back in new mode and our drop down list has all been refreshed. So again, all happened through a toggle. And you can put a ton of stuff in there. So, I mean, we just, we've got some very basic things in here. We put our form into new mode and we refresh the list. But like I said, put in all kinds of things that you need done that puts your screen back into a fresh mode that you want it to be in. Uh, the only key to this is just make sure that you have that local reset uh, or screen one reset or whatever variable name you choose make sure that you're setting that back to false at the end of your formula so that uh, the toggle actions all happen so that it'll be loaded and ready to be triggered again the next time you set that variable to true pretty straightforward and i hope you can use this well, what do you think I hope you liked the video, and I hope you can use some of these tips in your own apps today. So go ahead and put them to use, and don't forget, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and give me some comments. Let me know what you thought. And I'll see you next time on the next video. Happy power apping.